Section D, risk management. We are right here. 10% of your syllabus. Of course, level of testing is level C. This is what is included. Risk management, types of risk, risk identification and assessment system, risk mitigation strategies, and managing risk. There are just very few questions in this area, just uh, six questions. We'll try to uh, discuss them as much in detail as possible. Right, here we go. Question number one. A firm is constructing a risk analysis to quantify the exposure of its data centers to various types of threats. Which of the following situations would represent the highest, highest annual loss exposure after adjustments for insurance proceeds? Highest exposure. Some of your loss is covered by the insurance. What is not covered, 20% exposure, 20% exposure, 50% exposure. We have to this compare these uh, four different types of occurrences and likely exposure in each case. How do we calculate this? Let's read the table. Event A has a probability of occurrence once in a year. The loss amount could be $15,000, out of which 85% is covered. What is not covered is 15% of this amount. 15% of 1500, 15,000. What's the amount? 15,000 times 15%, 15 that is 225, dollar 2250. Occurrence is one year, so it means the loss in one year could be 225, 2250 per year. Right, what about the next one? Frequency of occurrence, eight years. This will occur once in eight years. Loss could be $75,000, 80% is covered under the insurance, 20% is not covered. So 20% of 75,000, 75,000 times 20%, that is $15,000. This is for 8 years period, it will occur once in 8 years, so it means on a yearly basis, 15,000 divided by 8, it's $18,75 on yearly basis per year, because we have to bring them on the same base, that's only we can make a comparison on per year basis. Occurrence C, probable loss could be $200,000, 80% is covered, 20% is not covered, $200,000 times 20%, that is $40,000. $40,000 is the probable loss in 20 years on a yearly basis, it could be $2,000 per year. And lastly, $400,000 loss Frequency of occurrence, 100 years, 50% is covered, 50% is not covered. This could be the loss. In 100 years, on yearly basis, give you $2,000 per year. So, on yearly basis, if you compare these numbers, A, B, C, and D. So, on a yearly basis, option, the, the occurrence A has the highest loss for the company, highest exposure, highest exposure so that makes A to be your correct option. Okay, a company that prides itself on its innovation revised an existing popular brand without conducting sufficient market research. You did not conduct sufficient market research, you made a product revision, so you took a risk. By taking this action the company exposed itself to what type of risk? Let us discuss these risks one by one. Credit risk. Credit risk is a risk that a lender faces from the borrower or a seller faces in case he has sold goods or services on credit. That's called the credit risk. When you say strategic risk, strategic risk is the risk faced by a business when the, when the customer needs change, when there's change in economic circumstances around you something that is not in your control. Strategic risk is something that is not in your control, that affects every business. Hazard risk. Hazard risks like fire, flood, theft, earthquake, hurricane, these are the risks that can be insured. Hazard risks are insurable risks. Credit risk already discussed. Operational risk. Operational risk means risk involving company processes, risk involving company systems and people. 
Remember, operational risk involves people, processes, and systems within the organization. Risk emanating from failed processes, failed system, failed internal control processes. This is called operational risk. Right? So, under this, again, now we got the idea, these different types of a company that prides itself in its innovation, revises its existing popular brand without conducting sufficient market research. Customer needs were not looked at. Economic factors that dis dis define customer spending behavior, they were not looked at. So that tells us that it's a strategic risk. Right? And since this effort of conducting a market research was a part of our operational plan. We should have conducted the market research. That's a failed process on our part. That's a failed activity that we should have taken. So this, from this aspect, it's an operational risk. So it means it's a strategic risk and operational risk together that makes D to be the correct option. Next, a German clothing retailer sells its products mainly online to customers worldwide. Company management believes that its primary risk relates to problem with the online website. See, Online website, that's the major risk they are facing from the website. A secondary risk is the exchange rate volatility. Which of the following best characterizes the company's primary risk and secondary risk? This primary risk online website, this is not a strategic risk. It's not a financial risk. It's not an insurable risk, uninsurable risk like flood, fire, theft, etc. It's an operational risk. Your online website might have certain loopholes, certain uh, security issues. It's it's an operational risk. Exchange rate volatility. It's called financial risk. So the two risks involved are operational risk and financial risk. That makes D to be the correct option. And D. Next, when implementing a continuous enter uh, enterprise risk management process, ERM, what steps should an organization take first? Control previously identified risk. In ERM, we conduct, reassess the risk from ground zero. This is not the domain we are interested in, in ERM. Establish a risk management budget. This is quite an inappropriate term. No such thing exists as risk management budget. Yes, risk management helps us in budgeting process, but there is no such term as risk management budget. This term itself is not appropriate in the given context. So what should we be doing first? Establish its strategy and objective. Yes, that's what we should do first. Risk monitoring, risk communication, they all come subsequent to our uh, strategy setting and objective setting. So establish strategy and objective that comes first. Monitoring and communication they come later. So that makes C to be our correct option as a first step. C. Next. A rice farmer has decided to protect against possible price fluctuations at the time of harvest by purchasing some rice options. Let us first discuss what are the risk options available to us. These are the possible risk responses we have. This is the way you can memorize. Some people say Tara, it should be T-A-E-R-A, Taiara, -E whatever the way you want to memorize it. This T stands for risk transfer, getting an insurance, purchasing some instrument that reduces your risk. A for risk acceptance. This could be the second response. E, risk exploitation, deliberately looking for risk in order to maximize your returns. R is also called risk mitigation or risk reduction. This is the fourth response. And finally, the last one, avoid the fagaro. Do not involve yourself in an activity that involves risks. So these are the five responses. Transfer the risk through risk insurance with an insurance company, with your vendor, supplier, counterparty transaction. We can transfer risk. We can accept risk, whatever it is, we are ready to face it. 
risk exploitation, deliberately looking for risk to make more return on your investments, risk reduction called risk mitigation, instituting good uh, internal control system, good policy so as to risk could be mitigated or reduced, and risk avoidance not entering into an arrangement that involves risk. These are the five possible risk responses. A rice farmer has decided to protect against possible price fluctuation at the time of harvest, purchasing some rice options in the future markets. Now, he has not avoided. Avoided means he simply refuses to invest in rising. This is not risk avoidance. This is not risk reduction. He hasn't instituted some system to protect himself by himself. He may, might have uh, used some way by himself to reduce the risk of loss. He didn't. Rather, he utilized the future market to hedge his risk. This is called risk sharing. He has not accepted. Rather, he has shared the risk through the future market. So that makes C to be your correct option. Even though a company implements an enterprise risk management program, ERM has been implemented, it still is likely to have risk. The risk, even after implementation of ERM, risk that doesn't go away. What is that risk? First of all, tolerable risks are those risks which we are ready to accept, which we consider acceptable risks. Tolerable risks are risks that which an organization considers that such risks are acceptable. Inherent risks are the risks involving in a particular line of business like uranium prospecting, investing in derivatives. Such businesses are inherently risky. It's not inherent risk. The risk that doesn't go away even after taking all the actions we could take, risk mitigation, risk transfer, risk sharing, risk um, reduction, but this risk we can't reduce is called the residual risk. The risk that doesn't go away is called the residual risk and that's the answer. Even though a company implements an ERM system, it still is likely to have some risk. This risk that doesn't go away is called the residual risk. Then what is the uninsurable risk? Uninsurable is risk is the risk that cannot be insured. Like you people cannot get an insurance on your CMA exam success. CMA exam failure, the risk of failure cannot be insured through any insurance company. Why? Because it is uninsurable risk. It cannot be statistically determined. It's an uninsurable risk. So, the result here is C. This is how residual risk is defined, presented in the reference. And that completes your risk management section of CMA Part 2.